if you had to help an agent out there that's struggling, they're 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 not where they want to be yet, um, and maybe maybe they're new, but they're like, man, I'm I may quit. I'm thinking about it. Like I'm not making any money. What advice would you give them? Hmm. We get a lot of YouTube comments. Dylan you'd have to, it. you'd have to find out and identify. Number one, you got to be honest with yourself, because if you're not being successful, it's either something you're missing personally or something you're missing in the support system. It, it's not yeah. you, because I firmly believe mm. I could take anybody, and I mean anybody for the most part, unless you're a mean person or you have no integrity. Or extremely lazy. Or extremely lazy. But most people I could take that want to succeed and I could teach you how to do this. Mm. It, you might not, it might not happen in two years, right? I would say the average person reaches success by year three or four where they're truly comfortable at that point. And they don't really feel like they need a whole bunch of support necessarily. I think it's about a three or four year learning curve. I believe for people that work with me or someone like me or have a system like that, you can shorten that learning curve to 18 months or less. T six months with the right person. Yes. Um, if you have the right mentality, you have the right ingredients, you have the right leadership to guide, what you need is a track. The reason I was able to do what I did was I got a, a, a a head start on everybody because I spent a long time running an FMO agency as the sales director, as the recruiter. I went through every job. I went through status person. I ran quotes. I was a life guy. I was the under 65 guy for a while. And then I spent a long time as the major support for a lot of agents on Medicare, Medicare Advantage. I had to put together programs on how to teach somebody how to sell the stuff. Yeah. And I had never sold it before. I'd never wow. been in the field. And so um, I, you have to have training. You have to have support. And number one, if you're relying on other people for training, that's your first mistake. So I took responsibility to train mm. myself. When, when on, it was a Friday, I remember it like it was yesterday. My best friend was the Medicare guy at our agency. I was the under 65 and life guy. That friend of mine upset a person in the office and got himself fired. Ooh. So at 3 p.m. on a Friday, my boss came in and said, you're the new Medicare expert. You need to know everything there is to know about Medicare by Monday. Ooh. And so I went home and I, st I studied Medicare um, like it was my job because that was my new job. I had to have all the answers to every question someone could ask me. Um, and so was I able to do it? I mean, I would give myself a B on knowledge after that weekend. I went from wow. I have known nothing to her. I memorize stuff in a different way than most people. And so I categorize, I memorize. And so it's all in here now. And so I was able to take that and then over time develop stuff. And so that's my number one recommendation. If you don't know Medicare up one side and down the other, and you don't know all the products up one side and down the other, you're at a distinct disadvantage over everybody else who does. Yeah. And so study, study, study. Practice, practice, practice. I don't care if you got to call your aunt, your mom, your sister, whoever, have them pretend to be a consumer and throw curveballs at you. Your, your consumers are going to throw curveballs at you. They're going to leave stuff out. They're going to, oh, I forgot about that medication. I forgot about this. I forgot about that. And you've got to have a plan in place to how do I fix it? How do I overcome it? How do you overcome someone who cancels their policy? That's a question I ask a lot of people. And most yep. people don't know what to do. They, well, it's gone now. I don't ever let it go that easy. Yep. Um, you fight. Not necessarily fight. I don't think fight's the right word. I, I re-educate. Because okay. nine out of ten times when someone changes their plan after I've helped them, it's because somebody has uneducated them or told them something different or they've saw a commercial or something. Something happened. That's good. Um, and so I'm going to, my first, and you got to do it compliantly. That's a nugget. So I'll send a letter, just basically, I don't know what happened. Being honest, again, you just got to communicate with the client, hope they reach out back. I would say half the clients I lose, I'll end up getting back the next AEP. That's amazing. With that tactic. Um so yeah, you want to have a plan, you want to have support, um, but yeah. yeah. You, you try, most people just let let them leave. You try to do your best to keep I them. didn't always. So for a long, long time, since I'm so hyper competitive, if I lost a client, I'd be like pissed off um, to the point where I would like think about sending them like a like a photocopy of me flipping them off. I mean, I've, I've thought about crazy stuff. I've gone down <laughs> weird roads and different things. Yeah. Um, but in reality, once you come to terms with, it's not you. That's right. Sometimes it's misassociated. Uh, you get misassociated as you are the insurance company. I used to get mad at that. But after a little bit of self-analyzation, I realized 
It's my fault. It's, it's not their fault. I didn't do a good enough job of explaining to them exactly my affiliation and creating the barrier that I am not the insurance company. I work with the insurance company to work for you. Um, and so once I've gotten that digested, now moving forward, I have a lot less, I don't, I don't really have a lot of rapid disenrollments. I don't have a lot of leakage. I don't lose clients to other people um, very often. I can't say I never do. Um, most, most of the clients I lose, unfortunately, is to death, wow. um, which to me is the only acceptable. Yeah, that's, that one's out of your control, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope so. <laughs> what, 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 how important is the, the pipeline, the marketing piece, always having oh, people to talk to, if you prospecting? Take, if you take one day off, one, for me, with the way my pipeline works, if I take one day off or two days off like yesterday and today, it's going to take me three weeks to catch back up. Wow. to get everything back to where it was. Um, half of the pipeline is organization. And so if you take your eye off the ball, for, it's like a batting. If yeah. anyone who's played softball or baseball, if you closed your eyes during the pitch for even a millisecond, you lost the ball. You're, you're going to strike out every time. I, you have to get lucky to hit at that point. Yes. And so that's the same analogy I can give you to the business pipeline is your level of business is determined by your pipeline. Your pipeline mm -hmm. is determined by the work you did six months ago, eight months ago, two years ago. I, I just got a call before we came in here from a client, from a friend who went to a meeting I did three years ago. So they got my car from someone else wow. from a meeting I did three years ago. And so that's the kind of trickle down you can get um, if you're doing the pipeline thing at all times. Um, and so for yeah. me, I, at this point, I theoretically, I think, I wouldn't hit my goals but I could easily survive off of referrals only. Yeah. I could only work referrals if I wanted to. And most agents, that's their goal. The problem with that goal is, with any referral source, it's always finite. There's, there's always an end to that thing. Somehow, some way, the person's gonna retire, the, at the financial advisor you're getting referrals from, the doctor's office is gonna hire a new person. Something's gonna happen and you're gonna yes. lose that referral source. And so for me, I'm always still working leads. I'm always still generating leads. Why? Because if if, if something hits the fan and I have to now rely on leads again, yeah. I don't want to be busting rust off. I don't want to be reformulating how to work the leads. I want to be dialed in, ready to where I could just start back over and re rebuild it right back up. Um, so yeah, work in the leads, work in the system, work in you. I think those are the yep. three things, working. How many appointments do you run a week? Um, 30 to 50. Um, non-AEP time, uh, during AEP, more than that. That's way, more awesome. than that. way more than that. That's awesome. Um, 30 to 50 appointments a week. Mm -hmm. What would you say the key to doing that is if someone wants to ramp up to that level? And maybe, maybe they don't. Maybe that scares them to death. Maybe they don't even want well, to work that hard. Who knows? You, but. You've got to have a way to do that. So I have referrals. I have leads. I have leads from carriers, lead, other lead opportunities, lead opportunities from uplines. There's... there's Referrals. There's a lot of yeah. different stuff that you can do. Um, I'd say it's up to you. It's, I choose how hard I work. You choose how hard you work. You That's choose right. how hard you work. That's you choose right. how hard you work. That's right. Um, and so it, it's really up to you. There are opportunities there. Whatever state you're in, yes, there's is. thousands a month that turn 65. Yes. I don't care which one it is. Sometimes it might even be hundreds a day yeah. in your area. What do you um, think about the person that complains about their area being the reason that they're not successful? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. I, I've driven a thousand miles in a day for appointments. Um, we heard I've that, heard a, that recently. Someone's like, I can't do seminars in my area, so I just can't do them. Well, you can't. You can move. Uh, you could get in your car and drive two hours to the next town. You could, uh, that's an excuse. You do virtual ones. You could do whatever you want. Yeah. You, you make two, two choices. You either make action or you make excuses. I love that. You pick. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would say there's opportunity. It might not be in your backyard, but I don't live next to the, I live in Colorado and I don't live, I live 90 miles away from Denver. I live in the middle of nowhere in a town of 12,000 people. 12,000 people. So trust me when I say it's not my area that I'm working. Yeah. It's not. There's like 40 a month that turn 65 in my county. Even if I got them all, that's not enough for me. No, it's not. 40 a month times 12 is? Yeah, that's 480. That's less than 500. That's, that's right. my AEP goal last year. That's right. Um, and so that's not enough. Hey, if you enjoyed this, 
I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. It, you are, you have like a special energy about you that you, like I'm telling you guys, you get to know this cat, I'm telling you, like he, he, he just, he, from a, like a relationship standpoint, personality standpoint, you're one of the easiest person 